Hello and welcome back to my Newbie Dose Precision series. As many of you know, I've been piecing together this Remington 700 based long range precision rifle really for more than a year. And I've been pretty happy with the way it's turned out so far. But the one item that really still isn't up to the task is this stock. Now the Remington 700 AAC SD ships with what looks like a pretty nice Hogue overmolded stock. It is a very comfortable stock. It has a slightly grippy surface. Uh, it stays warm in cold weather and cool in hot weather and really would be probably a great stock for a hunting rifle. But on a precision rifle it has several features that uh, really don't lend to that type of shooting. Uh, one is the very low comb that necessitates a riser or stock pad of some kind. The other is the traditional sweep of the pistol grip which makes it difficult to get a good approach to the trigger. And the third and most important is the flexibility of the forend, which I've shown before, but as you can see, it takes very little pressure to move that forend, and off of a bipod, it contacts the barrel and affects the free float and accuracy of the rifle. Well, a delivery truck just showed up, and it's been a long time coming, but I have the solution to all of those problems right here. All right, let's get this open. As you can see, I chose the KRG X-Ray chassis. And I'm seeing this in person for the first time, as you are. Looks like we have the chassis. We have three length of pull spacers, which is the way you adjust the length of pull. We have a couple of Magpul mole rail sections where we can put wherever we want. We have our action screws and all the mounting hardware to be able to mount uh, various things on the forend. And of course, the chassis. All right, so this is the KRG X-Ray chassis. They have made a couple of changes to this uh, chassis recently. Starting from the rear of the chassis and moving forward, it does come with a Kikis uh, recoil pad. And this is, uh, pad is soft but not too soft, probably one I'll keep, but if you don't like this one, it's standard Remington 700 pattern, uh, pattern pad, so you can replace it with any Remington 700 uh, butt pad. Uh, that we do have adjustable length of pull via spacers. Uh, they used to sell these separately. We now have it shipping with three spacers, and if you need more length of pull adjustment than that, you can stack as many of them as you need, so you can buy additional um, length of pull spacer kits and get it out to where you need it. It does have a hole on each side which accepts a Magpul uh, flush cup and you can mount that either direction um, for a uh, quick detach sling. You also have these plates on either side and they do make a, a plate that slips in there that has a HK hook or that can also be used as a flush cup that sits off angled on this. Um, it's the, the whole chassis is very lightweight, which is one of the selling points. And some people use this uh, forend even on their more, uh, I'm sorry, this buttstock even on their more expensive Whiskey 3 chassis simply because of the lightweight. It does have an adjustable cheek piece. You have about an inch of travel. It's thumb wheel adjustable. As we come forward, this is the small pistol grip. And this is what it ships with. And uh, the large has to be pretty large because this is pretty hand filling. Now, of course, I have medium sized hands, short fingers, um, but this is very hand filling for me. So I think you'd have to have some pretty large hands to, to uh, want the large grip panels. Uh, but it does ship standard with the small. Uh, the pistol grip is very vertical and is a good uh, proper distance from the trigger to make the approach to the trigger uh, much better. Now, particularly, again, I have shorter uh, fingers. Um, so that's important to me, and that gives not quite a 90 degree angle there. However, uh, which I'm used to, I, I, with my shorter fingers I have a hard time getting that nice 90 degree grip. But between the straight bow of the Timoney trigger, I think we're going to be able to get it uh, really nice. Something else I really like is they have these thumb shelves on, uh, on this stock, and that allows you to float your hand same side. Now that's something I tend to do on any stock, but it's really nice to have a nice memory position to put your thumb. And with that, and without having to float my fingers like this up on the stock, I think I'm going to be able to get a, a really good proper trigger approach and trigger reach. Um, as we move forward, you have the magazine release. It does accept AICS pattern magazines. It does not come with one, but accepts AICS magazines, either the 
uh, Magpul or uh, of course AICS, ProMag, those uh, three or four different brands. Um, they used to ship with an extended magazine release. They had wings that came back here. They've stopped doing that. The reason is a lot of people complained with gloves. They were bumping it and, and dropping the magazine. Um, so now they just have this little paddle release that's going to be a little harder, although still possible to hit with your trigger finger. Um, however, if you're just grabbing the magazine, it's pretty natural to grab that with your thumb and pull the magazine out. Um, they do still offer the little winged piece um, that comes on this. You can use the one that comes with the Whiskey 3 uh, or the one that used to come with the X-Ray, which is a little bit larger. And that uh, bolts onto the face of the magazine release and will give you an extended release if you prefer to eject it with your trigger finger. Um, other than that, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of mounting points where we can mount our Mo rails, L2, L3 rails, uh, bipod adapters, and a variety of uh, other accessories that KRG makes and, and many standard accessories. Um, these holes connect this fore end to the chassis. All of these other holes are for mounting accessories and uh, they make a bunch of stuff including a Monfrotto uh, tripod adapter. As you can see we have a one piece aluminum backbone that comes all the way to the end and this is what your rifle is going to bed against. That includes a nice flat for your recoil lug and this is a generous hole and in general it's a generous inlet so you're not going to have problems uh, with clearance with accessories. Uh, but this one piece aluminum chassis is what everything else bolts onto including the, uh, the butt stock, the pistol grip modules which are these pieces right here, this whole thing, side and this grip comes off and you can replace these with a different size trigger guard and of course the uh, plastic uh, polymer forend. So at any rate, very lightweight, very comfortable chassis and I think it's going to work really well. Let's get this sucker on. Alright, so the first thing of course to remove the action. We are not going to Reuse the action screws as the one that come with the KRG chassis is a different length. But we'll set those aside. Okay, there we go. Okay, and on the chassis, we need to remove the fore end, the plastic portion. That's a pretty tight tension fit. And that, of course, reveals the chassis underneath. When you get the action out, is also a good chance to uh, wipe everything down. Uh, one disadvantage of living in Arizona is sand gets in places you would uh, never believe sand could get. <laughs> and good opportunity to get some of that out. Okay, so KRG recommends lubricating your uh, action screws with a heavy grease. And I generally just do whatever the manufacturer recommends. So I'm going to use just a touch of this um, AeroShell 33 Armors Grease. And uh, grease up the action screws. Just a real light coat. Alright, and now with this forend removed, we can set this on here. Make sure the trigger clears. And the recoil lug slips right through. It says to use two washers for Remington 700 for the front screw. So we'll put those both on there. This chassis also fits a Tika T3. Okay, and on the rear action screw, there's no washers. There's kind of a little, looks like a metal plate in there um, to, uh, for this to go against rather than the polymer. And turn that down, not even tight, just, just get it started. So now I'm just going to snug them down, just a, not particularly tight, just a little bit. And seat the action, just simulate some light recoil by wrapping it on the table a couple of times and we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Now of course we remove the magazine body. We don't use it with the chassis because we'll be using AICS magazines. 
So while you can't access this front uh, action screw through the plastic chassis, it's hard to get a torque wrench in there. So uh, they recommend you leave the fore end off for this step and uh, torque it incrementally. They also recommend you use a little bit lower torque setting than the maximum 65 with a lubricated screw. Um, although I'm used to using more or less the maximum. Uh, but we'll go a little lower and try it, see how it works. Uh, so what I'm going to do is incrementally torque it, uh, starting with the kind of minimum, and working my way up, going backwards, forwards, and back a little bit at a time, make sure that gets seated um, accurately, particularly the first time that I do this. Uh, so I'll, I'll torque a little bit, run the torque wrench up, torque a little bit more. Okay, got it all torqued up to spec. Now we can get addressing the fore end. That's a nice fit. I don't know if you can see the, the angles in here, but it really just slides right in. Looks almost like it's one piece. Um, this line lines up with the ejection port and the edge of the chassis. Uh, really well machined. And in terms of free float, we're not going to have any trouble. There's a lot of room uh, between the barrel and the chassis. Before putting the fore end on, it's a good time to mount any accessories that you may want on the bottom. They mount using Magpul style uh, nut plates. I suspect they're actually Magpul to go with the Magpul uh, M2 and M3 uh, rail sections. So there's a number of places they can mount. We also have uh, some hex nut slots and included nuts for mounting KRG accessories such as barrier stops, bag riders, and uh, tripod mounts that can go on here. Uh, the L2 uh, rail can go here, here, or you can put an L2 or L3 rail on the back of the buttstock to run a monopod instead of this uh, bag rider that uh, ships. All I'm going to install today is the swing swivel. I haven't converted my uh, Harris bipod to uh, Picatinny at this point, and I don't want to use an adapter. That'll also make it easy to go on. So there is also an included nut plate specifically and washer and swing swivel to go on here. Put it on the forwardmost peg because that's where I'm going to mount my bipod. All right, now just slip the fore end on. It slips on, but it's a bit of a tight fit. And it is designed to have a little bit of fore and aft travel um, when it's on. So I'm just setting the front end more or less flush. And uh, then we'll find the screws. You notice these holes are oblong. That's to be able to move this fore end back and forth a little bit in order to tension the magazine or to get the right fit for the magazine. Now that design is clever, uh, but it actually caused KRG some grief. Um, early on in this chassis, uh, people were having trouble with poor magazine fit, uh, probably mostly because they hadn't read the directions and didn't realize that you need to uh, slide this back and forth to fit your magazine. Uh, it does have uh, two size screws. These short ones are for the front four bolts. These back two are going to be used in Remington 700 only. They're not used in the uh, Tika T3 uh, installation, uh, but the longer ones going back on the Remington. So these are still screws on aluminum thread, so you can be a little careful when I start these in here. And for now I'm just going to kind of barely snug them down. Get all six of these in. Now I've gotten a Magpul uh, 762AC, which is Magpul's new AICS pattern magazine. Um, of course like Magpul, they're lightweight, they're high quality, and they're uh, just under $40 as opposed to $60 to $80 for an AICS metal magazine. So the AICS magazines are very, very nice, but unless I find uh, fit or function issues with these, I think I'm going to run just Magpuls. This one's a five rounder, so you can do your desired fit. So right now it's maybe a little loose, a little drop free. So I'm just going to, I have just the screws just slightly tensioned. I'm just going to tap the forearm back just a teeny bit. I want it to just barely drop free, but minimum wobble. Now guys differ on, on how tight or loose they like their magazines. And that feels pretty good, maybe just a little more. And that's why they offer this. Also different types of magazines. If you run all ACS, they're a little thinner. I don't, I don't know if the outside dimensions are any different. 
There we go. That feels good. All right, let's go ahead and tighten these down. All right, now they do warn not to get these tighter than 18 uh, foot-pounds. So I'm actually going to use the torque wrench, not because it needs to be precise, but because when I monkey these down, I, I tend to get them tighter than that. Anyway, I do have some snap caps here, so we'll go ahead and load up the magazine. And test function. All right, magazine locks good. All right, I'd say that works. Okay, so that completes the install. Uh, the next thing to do is to adjust the fit. Changing the length of pull is just as easy as loosening the two screws in the butt pad and then inserting spacers. Lost the nut plate. You can see you also have a height adjustment here. And because I ride my comb pretty high, uh, I have relatively high cheekbones, uh, so I have to run my comb pretty high. Um, I like to bring my butt pad up so it's behind the comb. So it's just about all the way up, but I'll loosen those up and slide it the rest of the way up. All right, so with those screws lo loosened, we'll see that this has kind of preset positions, a number of them. Now the bag rider's back, so it's going against that, but the bag rider can also be moved forward and backward if you want it lower. Uh, it was second to the highest. I'm going to bring it right up to the highest position, which will be about there for me. There are grooves on the back side that correspond with grooves in the stock that create those kind of set positions. So I'm just going to run that all the way up and tighten that. All right, so with the butt pad off, I'm going to take the one screw. They're marked one, two, and three, according to how many spacers you're going to use. I'm pretty short, so I'm going to use one. You have to push these screws through the butt pad, and that's perhaps one of the trickier parts of doing this. She's at his little punch. And then put these longer screws in. put the spacer on. Now they warn you not to lose the little nut plate, which I promptly did, <laughs> but that just goes right back here. So you have to hold that on and get it started. All right, the last thing to adjust at the cheek piece. We have just a single thumb wheel. We can pull that out. And then these two studs can be repositioned into any two adjacent holes to move it fore and aft. It is asymmetrical, so depending on the shape of your face or right or left-handed, you can flip that around um, to uh, get the contour that you want. And again, quite a bit of fore and aft adjustment. Now that's not toolless, only the up, up and down is toolless. Uh, and it doesn't have any uh, cast uh, or can't. So really just, uh, just height and fore aft movement. Uh, but for the price of this stock, you can get more adjustment by going up to the Whiskey 3. Now they do have something clever in these little O-rings. What we can do is drive these O-rings down and then set the uh, cheek piece in here and get it where we want it on our face. And now tighten the thumb wheel to tighten that down. Now when we pull it out, these O-rings are going to mark our spot. So if we have it in a position where we have to remove it to pull the bolt uh, or to get a cleaning rod down the barrel, uh, which is often the case, we can just drop that on there and if we don't push too hard, it'll drop right back down to the exact same position. So very simple idea, uh, but very clever and makes for some easy repeatability. Well, it's two days later and I spent most of the day yesterday at the range. I took my time getting everything dialed in, re-zeroed the scope, and restacked the zero-stop shims for the new zero. And by the way, those shims are working fantastically. 
Once I got everything dialed in, I sent a bunch of ammo down range at targets with distances ranging from 100 to 795 yards. Now those of you that have followed this series know that I bought this core rifle over a year ago. And while I've had a lot of fun putting it together and shooting it over the last year, the original stock was a continued source of frustration. It shot fine off of a bag, but I was never able to produce a decent group off of the bipod. Well, yesterday I shot this .68 inch group off of the bipod prone at 100 yards. And that's as good as I've ever shot. Less than three quarter MOA. I'll take it. So, what do I think about this chassis? Well, it's easy to spend north of $1,000 on a precision stock or chassis. So, at $550, this, relatively speaking, is a budget product. Now, it would be nice to have more toolless adjustment as well as cant and cast on the cheek piece and the butt pad. But you know, when I was shooting, I didn't think of any of that. In fact, once I settled into this rifle, I didn't think about the rifle at all. It was just me and the target. And isn't that the point of all this? So for me, this chassis got me there. Now while I may make some minor tweaks and changes going forward, I think we can call this rifle complete. So to help you with your decisions, I'll post my actual updated costs. Now, as you can see, I could have saved about $300 by slapping a scope on a Ruger precision rifle and just shooting it right out of the box. And for many of you, that path will make more sense. But I would argue that this rifle is every bit as good and is exactly tailored to my needs, wants, and tastes. So for me, the extra money was well worth it. Well, with this project complete, now there's just that minor task of learning to read the wind.